Hey everyone, Brock here from Brock's Badger Health and Fitness, and today we're going to learn how to prepare some healthy snacks during COVID. So I wanted to do this video because at the present moment we've still got this crisis of COVID-19 happening and a lot of us are spending a lot of time at home and this consequently happens to be a place where all of our food is. So temptation of eating all the time is in front of us far more frequently than it would be if we were going to work. Now apart from the stress and mental strain of staying at home and uh, being in a different work environment, in fact we're mixing up our leisure environment at home with our work environment, which is not the most amazing idea, but hey we have to adapt to the circumstances that are happening around the world at the moment. So the point that I wanted to make here was if you're someone that is found there starting to put on weight during this period because they're constantly snacking on less than ideal snacks. Um, this video is for you to see the different things that you can still snack on, keep healthy and nourish your body with what you need to recover from exercise, to just generally maintain health and uh, longevity. Okay, first and foremost, the easiest snack that Mother Nature has gifted us is fruit. Okay, nice and simple. I've just got a banana here to represent that piece of fruit. But it doesn't have to be a banana. It can be an apple, it can be an orange, it can be any serving of fruit that you like, okay? Now, things to keep in mind, obviously, fruit is high in carbohydrates, and if, you know, we get excessive consumption of carbohydrates, then it's it's similar to, you know, eating candy bars and things like this. The big distinction I'm gonna make between those two is that a fruit is a whole food. It's got very minimal processing, besides, you know, unless you're buying organic, it's gonna have uh, pesticides and those sorts of things to stop bugs eating them in the crop, but, it's a nice little packaged piece of candy from nature that has nutrients in plentiful amount. Something like a banana has got potassium, it's got vitamin B6, it's got vitamin B2, vitamin B3, multitude of different things. We probably all know a great source of potassium, but I'm not necessarily a fan of thinking about foods as nutrients we always say this is a carb this is a fat this is a protein well foods don't exist just in one area like that you know you don't just eat bananas to get potassium you eat a banana because you eat want to eat a banana it's a it's a whole piece of food and that is a very very important distinction to make i guess when you're thinking about snacks if you can prioritize whole foods meaning as close to its original source as possible that's generally a good guide of whether it's healthy for you or not. So just one more point about that, um, that will probably help you get what I'm trying to say here, is that fruit juice is a good example of a process that food undergoes to become, I guess, more digestible in some sense. Um, but that is not ideal. I mean, fruit juice will spike your blood sugar much quicker than a whole piece of fruit will. So. I could have the option to, to chuck this banana in the blender and blend it all up. And you know, provided I'm, I'm keeping the fiber and everything in there, it, it's not too bad, but it, it doesn't compare to eating it as a whole piece of fruit because my body has to do an action with my jaw, right? I have to chew, that expends calories. When we're talking about weight loss and we're talking about health, it's all of the incidental things that we do throughout the day that add up and they, generally speaking, help to contribute more to weight loss, to more to the energy that you burn throughout the day, even more than exercise can. So that, yeah, that's the main point I wanna make there. Okay, for the next snack idea, we've got nuts. Now I'm gonna make an important distinction here between raw nuts, like what I've got here, and roasted nuts. Once again, coming back to that theory I was talking about before, when we process food, it comes or becomes further and further from how it's naturally meant to be consumed. And look, not all foods are meant to um, be eaten straight from the ground. You know, like a potato is probably a good example of that. Um, you want to 
make sure that you dig it up, wash it off, clean it, and cook it. It's going to be far more easy for your body to break down a potato if it's cooked first. Okay, but not all foods are like that, and nuts probably one of, one of the the best examples of that. Some of them have to go on undergo processing to be consumable in the first place. But the more processing it undergoes, like roasting them after they've been cleaned and you know cooked. Sometimes I think cashews are cooked before they're like considered raw and edible. Um, it it's a uh, it takes away and it change it takes away from the nutritional profile of the food and it it um it changes the fat structure. In the case of nuts. Roasting nuts actually changes the fat structure from good fats to harmful fats that cause inflammation. So anyway, what I've got here is some almonds, and they're raw, yum, yum, yum. Almonds, great source of vitamin E, of calcium, of fiber, got a nice amount of protein in there. But once again, we're not just thinking about it from the perspective of this food has these nutrients. We're thinking about it as that's a whole almond, yum, I'm going to eat it. Okay, we've got cashew nuts there, great source of copper, great source of fat. Brazil nuts, very, very important nut to be consuming. Unless you're consuming Brazil nuts, you might be missing out on one of the most important nutrients you don't know about. That nutrient's called selenium, and selenium has a very important role in reducing inflammation in our body. It helps some of the antioxidant molecules that our body produces itself to replenish themselves, one being glutathione. Okay, finally here we got walnuts. And the cool thing I like about walnuts is nature leaves us all these little clues about what the food could possibly do for us. In the case of a walnut, don't you think it looks a bit like a brain? I think it does. I think it looks extremely like a brain. Particularly when you flip it over like this. Oh, you can't really see it too well on this one. But you can see like there's almost veins coming out of there. Can you see that? It's very similar to the circle of wheels in the human brain. Very, very similar to how our brain gets blood flow. And ironically enough, walnuts are incredibly good for our brain. I think there's a study shown that walnuts actually help to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and specific in relation to the inflammation in the brain, um, which is pretty much what is going on in Alzheimer's. It, it's, it's prolonged inflammation. So yeah. That's uh, another great snack, is nuts. You pair them with the fruit, bam, you've just got an before and after lunch snack. Okay, so now we're gonna take you through just some, some more different things that you can prepare at home, some healthy COVID snacks. Okay, one of my particular favorites is brown rice cakes. Brown rice cakes we don't have, tend to have a tremendous amount of carbohydrate in them. In fact, if we look back here on the, on the nutritional label, per 100 grams. This is another tip I can give you guys. <clears throat> Always be looking at this 100 gram column, okay? That gives you a percentage of what is in the food. A lot of food manufacturers will draw your focus to this column, which is the quantity per serve, okay? But I can guarantee you, well, at least for me, five crackers ain't gonna fill you up, okay? So not, not necessarily saying overeat, you know, but just get to be getting an idea of how good the food is for you because like an, an amazing example of this is Pringles. Now I'm not, not having a go at the company that makes Pringles, all right, but we know that Pringles aren't necessarily thought of as a health food, okay? And if you look at per serving, if you, if you look at this column on Pringles, it looks like it's not so bad for you, all right? But if you go to this column on Pringles, you see that it actually contains quite a bit of fat and quite a bit of refined carbohydrate. Okay, and these are not things that you want. They're not conducive to health. Um, so anyway, coming back, brown rice cakes, awesome. They have fiber. These ones are particularly imbued with chia seeds, so some omega-3 fatty acids in there. But what their main role is to serve as something to spread something on, okay? Now, I'm not endorsed by any of these brands, okay? But <clears throat> I'm trying to cover them up here, right? Hold tahini, awesome source of calcium, particularly on a plant-based diet. It's basically ground up sesame seeds, okay? And it is an amazing source of protein and healthy fats. Really, really good for you. Another one we got here, the old peanut butter, okay? These are some healthy spreads that you can pop on these rice crackers to have a nice combination of a healthy snack. So what I'll normally do is I'll 
get the peanut butter, I'll pop it on the rice cakes, and then I'll add some banana on top. And just for a bonus, if we go into the cupboard here, a little spice drawer, I'll add some of this, some cinnamon. Now, not only does banana with peanut butter and cinnamon taste amazing, it's also going to help um, regulate that blood sugar spike that we often get when we eat carbohydrates, okay? It helps to regulate that. Cinnamon acts in a way that, um, without getting too sciencey and technical, cinnamon acts in a way that allows the glucose, being the energy that we get from carbs, to in you know, go inside of cells and give the cells in our body the energy that they need. So cinnamon, very, very good culinary spice. Um, only other point I wanted to make was um, peanut butter. Peanut butter is very, very easy to um, get confused about which peanut butter is healthy and which peanut butter is not. The key is, once again, when we're reading nutritional labels, okay, I made the point, don't focus on this per serve, focus on per hundred, because that is going to give you a percentage of what it is. So in this case, uh, per hundred grams, so it's 29.5% protein, 49.7% fat, 6.1% of that is saturated fat, which is very, very low. Um, we come in carbohydrate. 11.3%, okay? 4.6% of that is sugars, which is, once again, low, okay? And more importantly, one of my favorites, dietary fiber. Look at that, 6% fiber. Good amount of potassium in, in peanut butter, too. A lot of people don't know that, all right? Second most important thing to be looking at is what is the ingredients, okay? We're talking about should we be eating processed food or whole food? And whole food, in my opinion, my solemn opinion, is much more wholesome for us. Is going to make us much, much healthier. So, roasted peanuts, 100%. This means that this peanut butter here, this particular peanut butter, is nothing but roast peanuts. That's what you want. You don't want any other ingredients in your peanut butter, okay? Because <laughs> normally they're adding really harmful vegetable oils that when exposed to light, when exposed to heat, you think about, okay, you heat up toast and you put peanut butter on there, the fats will oxidize and they'll turn into trans fats. And trans fats act very, very similarly to saturated fats, okay? These are no good for our body, all right? They're, they will create inflammation and disease in the body. So, peanut butter, make sure you get whole peanuts. Same deal with this, okay? Tahini is supposed to only be sesame seeds. We look at the ingredients here, okay? Ingredients, just natural hulled sesame seeds. That's all it is. Okay, so two tips. Look at the per 100 gram column on your nutritional labels and look at the ingredients. If there's something in the food, like a you know color or a flavor, um, a preservative, and you don't know what it is, should you really be eating it? Okay, so just something to think about. I know this is a lot of information to take in, um, but you know, feel free to pause the video, write down things. Um, if you have any questions, please contact me on Facebook. I'll pop the link in the description, or up there somewhere, and my Insta, at Badger de Gellis. Okay, um, the thing that I'm sure that is probably on everyone's mind after I mentioned the thing about peanuts, um, and also the, the nuts, where I was saying roasting them is not ideal. Well, you're like, well, you said there's nothing but roasted peanuts in that peanut butter. Peanuts are not a nut. Even though we call them a nut, pea, that's the clue, pea. It's a legume, like a pea. Um, it is a very high fat, <laughs> high protein legume, but it's not a nut. Uh, so the, the fats that are in peanuts are a little bit more stable to heat than those that are in, say, almonds or walnuts. So yeah, peanuts are not a nut. Cool, another little cool idea here for you, right? <clears throat> Miso, very, very high in vitamin B12, very high in protein, high, very high in uh, quite a few um, nutrients. Pop it on your rice cakes, and then I'm gonna go ahead, pop some of this tahini on top of that for a bit of a nice creamy taste. And then we're gonna sprinkle it with these beautiful, wakami seaweed flakes. And you may be going, that's gross, Brock. Like, why are you eating seaweed? 
Well, we often hear that fish contain omega-3 and a lot of iodine. Like iodine comes from the ocean, generally speaking. Now, why would it be a good idea to take the life of an animal to eat something when you can just get the nutrient directly from where the animal's getting it? Seaweed. So I'm gonna I'm gonna spread this tahini over my miso, and then we're gonna add some seaweed flakes on there. And understand this is probably not everyone's taste. You don't have to do this idea, but for those that are keen for it, it's a beautiful, creamy, salty, just nutritious combination. Protein, fat, carbohydrates, you're getting it all, okay? And you're getting your micronutrients, more importantly. Iodine, on that point, is a very, very important nutrient for our brain function and our thyroid. Thyroid governs digestion. You're going to have sluggish digestion if your thyroid's not 100%. So get your iodine, guys. Another good example of processed versus natural source, okay? Talking about iodine. Natural, seaweed, processed, iodized salt. It's okay to get some of your iodine from here, but it's fortified with it, all right? Meaning that it's added to the salt. And this is primarily to stop people from getting iodine deficiency. Much better source. Your body identifies this as food, okay? And if we come back onto the, the back of the label here, you see just how much this is a powerhouse in terms of your nutrients. It's particularly all of your minerals there. Potassium, iodine, magnesium, calcium. A lot of people not getting enough of these, but look at that iodine per 100, 1700 micrograms. <laughs> Massive. All right. I'm going to put my tahini on here. All right, tahini is on. I'm just sprinkling the last of my wakami seaweed flakes on there for that nice iodine hit. Another COVID snack idea. Very healthy, plentiful in all of your macro and micronutrients, and more importantly, Mmm, I'm getting it everywhere, but it's delicious. Okay, final snack idea. Some people like to have this for breakfast. Um, I personally think it, it works for a snack or breakfast. So once again, don't have any, any endorsement to any of these brands. Not saying you have to buy these, but I'm similar. You'll probably get different ones in your country too, I'm imagining. But this is, this is pretty much the principle of the snack idea. I personally will be having a lot more yogurt to granola than that, okay? But this is one, it's got things like rice puffs in it, pepitas, which are pumpkin seeds, um, bran flakes for fiber, sunflower seeds, dried cranberries, some raisins in there, and they've added some blueberries. So I figured, okay, add something like that, or if it doesn't have fruit in it, you can get one like this, this is no fruit, and a gluten-free one, because gluten doesn't agree with me. Okay, it's chocolate flavor, and you see the basic principle is like buckwheat kernels, uh, sunflower seeds, rice puffs, etc. I think it says it there. Oh, there's apricot in this, sorry. It's not fruit free. I lied, sorry. But, blueberries. Awesome selection. Chuck that on top of the yogurt with your granola. I just picked a almond milk based yogurt, okay? Um, much, much healthier than the dairy alternative. Like I said, no saturated fats in this bad boy, but still all of the yogurty goodness. So, yogurt, granola, fruit. COVID snacks, ahoy! Okay, so in summary, we've got a couple of different snack ideas. You don't have to follow any of the snack ideas that I have there, but they give you some basic principles. And one principle, don't think of food as individual nutrients. It's a whole food. And the closer that you can be eating a food to its original source, how it was farmed, picked from the ground, okay? it's gonna be better for you. Second point is when you're looking at nutritional labels, look at the per 100 gram column, okay? That's gonna give you a percentage and a much more accurate idea of how many fats, carbohydrates, proteins are in that food. It'll give you it as a percentage, okay? It often will put a serving as smaller than what you eat of it, and you think it's not too bad, because you're like, oh, per serving, there's only this many carbohydrates, there's only this much fat, but I can guarantee you're probably eating too much of the wrong type of things particularly if you're coming to my channel for some help. So always look at the per 100 gram column. And the second point with that principle where we're looking at the nutritional labels is look at the ingredients list. If you can't identify some of the ingredients on that list, don't eat it or research it and um, keep yourself informed of what those things are. There are some preservatives 
that have like, you know, a preservative number 202 or whatever. Um, and they can be just natural things like lemon juice or vitamin C. So good to do a bit of research, but if you don't have the time as a general rule of thumb, don't grab the food if you read the ingredients list and it's got a whole heap of these nasty looking chemical names on there. Yeah, that's principle two. Principle three is trying to have fun with it. I know it's a very stressful period for everyone and we're really, really worried about you know what the future holds. But all we have control over is this present moment. So we can be doing, you know, fulfilling things for us, like choosing healthy things to eat or dedicating time into researching what's in the foods that we're eating. We can make more healthful decisions for our food and we can also be happy that we're giving our body the nutrients that it needs to flourish. <laughs> I apologize I put you through that. But in all honesty, guys, we have any questions about any of the snacks that I prepared today. Well, I didn't really prepare them, did I? I just gave you an idea. <laughs> but yeah, if you have any questions about the snacks I will go in over today, please chuck them in the comment section. I'll try my best to get back to them. All your lovely comments. Links in the description for my Facebook. Links in the description for my Instagram. Please follow me. Got some uh, snacks that I post on there all the time, as well as meal ideas, as well as different healthy places I go to eat in my city here. Um, yeah, take care of yourselves. It's a troubling time, an uncertain time. <clears throat> but remember that fear is far more infectious than this COVID virus. And everything we can do to keep ourselves informed is a step away from fear, is a step towards making informed decisions for our health and for the planet. So without getting too political, this is Brock from Brock's Badger Health and Fitness signing off for you guys, my little badgers. Rawr. Thank you.